So before we do anything else, let me show you the game that we're going to be making today. I'm going to click play here. And what we have is we have three women here who have three different orders of hot dogs and different stuff. And they have an anger level. If they get too angry, they walk away and they didn't get their order. And then they come back with a new order. If too many people leave, then you lose the game. And you can fill their order by clicking two buns, two hot dogs, three ketchup, one lettuce, one mustard, and dragging it to the woman. She's satisfied, the money goes up, and then she comes back with a new order. So you'll note here that each woman has their own individual order, their own individual anger level. The tooltips that they have are following them around. They have text inside of them that's a multi-lines. When you click the objects down here, they kind of add on to each layer, and I'll show you the way that that works. Quickly, I'm going to show you the hot dog here that I made. What it is is it's a bunch of different layers. If I take out the different layers, you'll see that, that first there's this one bun, and in between that you have to have the hot dog, and then you have to have the other bun, because you need the hot dog to sit in between the two buns. So we had to have some order levels there. I don't think that's actually lettuce. I think it's relish. You can fix that when you make this game and make your own version. And then you have the ketchup, then you have the mustard, and then you have all the different layers combined together. So that's how we're kind of going to do this. And then the other stuff that we have here, I'll show you some of the other assets. And the way that this works is that these are put into what's called atlases. You have the food atlas, which has all these different foods that sit on the bottom. When the ketchup is empty, you get that ketchup. When it's still full, you get that ketchup. And you can see I did a horrible Photoshop job here. So that's the food atlas. You have the hot dog atlas, which I showed you. And all of these are at 2x. You have the people atlas, which is these three people. I did a horrible Photoshop job just to get this done quickly. And that's why I made the background kind of pixely so that you can't see my bad Photoshop job. The background, so you kind of have your brick and your sky. That's why I made it all pixely so that you can't see my bad Photoshop job in there. And then you have the anger levels. Really easy to make. You just have, you know, you add a square onto each one. And then by the end, you have this. That's that's it. And then accidentally, it looks like I have a hot dog atlas here. So by deleting this, so we don't need that. So the first thing we'll do is we'll just create a new project. New project. And we're going to click a game. And we're going to call this Hot Dogs Skip Swift Sprite Kit. I'm going to make this just for iPhone. And in a future tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do the correct constraints for everything. But right now, I'm showing you just how to use Sprite Kit. That's the point of this tutorial. New new projects. So now you have a blank project. If you want to test this on an iPhone 5, which is what we're going to be making this for, just click 7.1 here, and you should be able to test this on an iPhone 5. We're going to do this in not portrait, but landscape left. That should do it. So the first thing we need to do is we need to drag in all of our assets. So we're going to have two things that are image assets. We can delete our spaceship here. One of the image assets is the tooltip. So that we're going to just use as an image asset. You know what? Let's do this a different way. Let's click the plus button, do new image set, and call it tooltip. And this way we can drag it directly into the 2x because I made this for a retina display. So there's our tooltip. We need our background here, a new, and this will automatically get, if we drag this one in, it'll automatically get put into the 2x because we labeled it with the at 2x. So that's why this one will work and that other one didn't because I didn't label this with at 2x. So then we have our food atlas. So this one's good to go. Now I didn't program in the uh, running out of food idea, but you are welcome to program that in. Most of the pictures are here for that. Few hot dogs, few buns, many hot dogs, many buns. We're going to take the food atlas. We're going to just drag it into the hot dog skip. You want to make sure that copy items if needed is selected and everything else is good to go. We're going to drag in our anger atlas, which I'll have at 2x, so we're good to go there. Hot dog skip. We're going to drag in our people atlas. Those should all have at 2x, so we're good to go there. And obviously, you want to make other versions of the images for the other versions of the iPhone. We have our hot dog atlas, and those have 2x on them, so we're good to go there. 
So now I think we've got everything we need to get started here. Let's just go to our game view controller. So from the main storyboard, you're going to have this SK scene in here, and that's going to be controlled by the game view controller. So in the game view controller, we're not going to use the SKS game scene file, so we can just actually delete that. We're not going to use this on archive from file, so we can delete that. And we're not going to use this if statement, so we can delete that. And we need to delete the bottom part of the if statement. And then we can indent this correctly. And then we have our SK scene as an SK view. We're going to turn off multiple touch enabled because we only want them to be able to use one finger at a time. So SK view dot multiple touch enabled equals false. Ignore sibling order is OK. We're going to make our game scene by creating a variable up here called scene. That's going to be of type game scene. We're going to force this explicitly so that we don't need to use our initializer for the class because we're going to create it in the view did load. In the view did load, we're going to say scene is equal to game scene. Size is equal to the SK view bounds dot size. We're just going to set the scale mode to aspect fill and we're going to set the scene to be presented and we should be good to go. Now we're going to head over to our game scene. The first thing we're going to want to do is add the background to the scene. So called background, that's equal to an SK sprite node. and the image name is um, background. Now if we go to our image assets, we did not bring the background on, so let's make sure that we do that. I'm just gonna rename this background. Drag it in there. Well, let's create a new image asset. Call it background. Drag this into the 2x. I was gonna originally, instead of using hot dogs, I was gonna do falafel, so I called this falafel background, but change of plans. So then we have our image named background and we just need to um, position the scene so that we don't need the spaceship stuff and we don't need any of the touch stuff. So we're going to set the anchor point for the entire scene to be equal to a CG point and we're going to set it to the middle so that when we position our background it sits in the middle. Add the background to the scene. So add child background. So we can run this. Oh, that's supposed to be 0 0.5 x and y. Okay, now we can run this. So we have our background perfectly positioned because we set the anchor point to be in the middle of the screen. So now let's add our food area. So we'll just make another constant called food area. All that's important is the order that we place this on. It just needs to be above the background. And we just need to position the food area to be near the bottom. We can say food area dot position dot y is equal to CG float. The position of the y is going to be at the bottom plus the food area size height divided by two. So CG float CG rect get min y and the minimum of the frame and we want to add to that the food area dot size dot height divided by two. And then we can do an add child with the food area. So we can run this. And we are missing our image. So let's just make sure that we named it the right thing. Go to image assets, food area two. Let's just rename this just to food area. Okay, cool. We got our image. It's in the right place. This is an iPhone 4S. Let's change this to an iPhone 5S. That way, all the images that I made will be in the right place. Got our food area. The next thing we can do is we can add our three people to the screen. The way that I organize this code, we're going to make a person class so that we can individually instantiate people with their own anger level and their own orders and all that stuff. So we'll create a new Swift file. We'll call it person.swift. And the important thing to do is to import sprite kit here. We'll create a class called person, which is conformed to the printable protocol. That's basically so you can run a print line on this, so you can get a description of the person. So in order for it to do that, we need to use the property that's got to be a getter called description. So we'll create description, description, 
which is a string, which returns just that this is a person for right now. We'll also create an enum for the different types of people because you saw there were three different people. That enum is going to be a person type, and that's going to be an integer for the raw value, and it's going to conform to the printable protocol. In order for it to conform to the printable protocol, we need to create a getter called description, which is going to return a string. And for right now, we'll just turn person type. When we have more information, we can create it. The three different types of people are um, person one, two, and three. So person one is going to be equal to zero, person two, and then person three. Remember, those will auto increment if you watch the enum tutorial. So person two will be equal to one, person three will be equal to two. Then we'll create a getter, which is the drawing of this person. In order to do that, we need to create um, something that gets the right drawing for the person. So we'll create two different class functions here, one called get people. I mean, you can't loop through an enum to get its types at this point. So I needed to create an array that contained all those values. So just we're going to return person one, person two, person three. So that's the get people. And that's just going to return three different people for the sprites. So you can see that person one, two, and three is available in these sprite atlases. I'm going to show you how to use those in a second. But right now I'm just going to create some classes here. So the other class we're going to create is one of the enums. So it's as if we're looping through the enums, but we can't loop through the enums. So we'll just loop through this function that returns um, people types. So get people types, and that's going to return a person type. It's going to actually return an array of person types. And that's going to return person one, person two, and person three in an array. Since we're in the enum, we can say var drawing, which is going to return a string. And that's going to return the person dot get people. So get people is down here, which is going to return a string of one, two, or three. And then we're going to get the raw value of this current person. So if it's zero, one, two, or three, we'll get back the right drawing person one, person two, or person three. So we just say two raw, and that's going to return us the correct drawing. We've got a little hanging X down there. So now we should be able to add the people onto the screen. We go back to our game scene. All we need is an array that can hold the people that are currently on the screen. So we can say people is equal to a person array. Then we can call a function down here called add people. And we want to call it before the food area and after the background so that the people sit in between the food area and the background. So we'll call add people. For our add people function, and we're going to loop through the uh, people types in that person class that we created. We want to get an index too so that we can do this. So we can say index and person in enumerate. And we want to enumerate through the person dot get people types. So we're going to loop through basically the enum, except you can't. So we had to make this get people types array. Then we can create a sprite. And we can say the sprite is equal to an SK sprite node. And the image is going to be person dot drawing. So that's going to be the name of the image is the sprite that we put on the screen. And then we say sprite dot name because the name is a way that we can access the sprite later. And we'll know that any time they click the mouse and the name of that sprite starts with person underscore, we'll know that they clicked on a person. And we'll just call it person and the index of that person. And this way you can add as many people as you want. Just draw more people and add it to the atlas. The sprite position is going to be equal to a CG point make. The X position, so we start off with 100 just so it's not completely off the stage. Then we do CG rect. And we're going to get the minimum X we're going to use self.frame as the rectangle of reference. And for the y, we're just going to use 0. Now, if we just added self.frame to 100, it's not quite good enough because we need the middle of the sprite to be on there as well. So we want to use the sprites information as a reference too. So we can say sprite.size.width. And then all we're going to do is multiply that times the index. But that index needs to be a CG float. So we'll do CG float index. It's like they're going to start over on the left hand side and every time we take that number we multiply it times the index which is going to be zero then one when you multiply it times one it'll go to the next spot when you multiply it times two it'll go to the next spot so you can see that you'd be able to add more people if you really wanted to. So it's zero on the y because our anchor point is uh, zero zero. 
So then we're going to add the sprite to the stage. Now we need to have a way of tracking that sprite later on. We'll say people.append and we need to create a new person. Now we didn't add an initializer for our person yet, so let's go back to the people. Now for the person, we need to at least know what their position is and what the person type is. We will know their position if we have the sprite that they used to add the person to the screen. We'll just create an init function here. We want to grab the person type so we know which type of person it is, person type. It's going to be of type person type. And we want to grab the sprite, which is going to be an SK sprite node, so that we have reference to those things. So then we can just say self dot person type. Now we didn't create this yet, so let's create that. We can say var person type is of type person type. We can say self dot person type is equal to person type. And then we can say self dot sprite. We didn't create that yet. Let's create that var sprite is going to be of type SK sprite node. And so self dot sprite is equal to sprite that they passed in. So we at least need those that information. So now that we have a sprite for a person, because of the way that nodes work, we can add things to the sprite node of the person, like the tooltip and the anger frame. And then that will take on the position of that person because they are children of the original sprite node. And we'll see that in a second. So let's go back to our scene. So now we're going to add this person to the screen and we are going to create a new person. So we're going to create a new person and it needs a person type. The person type is going to be equal to person. The sprite is going to be equal to sprite because we're looping through the people types. We should be able to run this and we should get uh, people on the screen. Okay, so we have our three women on the screen here. Now we can add to them all sorts of things like an anger level and a tooltip and a current order and all that stuff. And it all resides within the class of that person in relation to that person. So then when you need to change different things about one person, you can do it individually. And if you need to reference one person, you can get that people array from the game scene and find individual things about that person. So we could add all sorts of stuff to the person. You can see how this is how people would do a game with tons of characters on the screen, keep track of each individual level of how much they ate, whether they're angry, all that stuff. Let's add the food to the screen next. In order to add the food to the screen, we have two different types of food here. We have the food that sits in the uh, bottom tray where you prepare the food, and you have the actual hot dog animation. So for the food itself, let's create that. We're going to create a function called add food, and that's going to come right after we do the food area because it's going to sit on top of the food area. So we can say not add child, but add food. And within each one of these functions, we will do the actual add child stuff, function add food. So for add food, we need to do the same exact thing we did for the people class. So we need to create a new food class so that we can keep track of the food and its properties. So create a new file, food swift. We're gonna do the same thing we're gonna create this from, we're going to import sprite kit. We're going to create an enum of food types, similar to the way we did the person types. We're going to create an int, which is printable. For the description, we can update the description of the, pe of the people now because we have all the information about that person. So we can save our description for the food is going to be a string, and that's just going to return um, food for right now. Working with the printable type, we now just need to have the case statements. So we have case and we'll have bun equal to zero. We'll have hot dog. We'll have ketchup. We'll have lettuce, which is actually relish, but I just, I named the sprite lettuce, so I'll just keep it like that. And mustard. I hope you forgive me for that. I will put in the many and few so that you can keep track of quantities, but we won't actually implement it in the game. I'll leave that up to you to do. And I'd be interested to see what you come up with. Now, we had get drawing for the other one. And for this one, we're going to do a similar get drawing, except we're going to do one for both many and few. So we will say var many is going to return a string. This is a getter. And we're going to return get sprite. And we want to know if it's the less or the more. 
So we can say, for many, it's not less, it's more, or it's many. And then we need to create that function get sprite. So function get sprite. And we want to know if less or more. So is this the many hot dog sprite or is this the few hot dog sprite? We're going to return a string. We're going to say var more or less. And this is the part that we'll figure out which is which. So for more, and the, the reason I'm doing this is you can see in the food, each one has the name underscore few, the name underscore many. We will just depend to the name of the sprite underscore few or many depending on which one it is. So we can just say if less, then more or less is equal to few. So it's going to be many by default, but if they send in less is true, then we'll return few. And then we can return the name of the food, but we can't do that yet because we need a function that's going to give us all the food names. Let's create the food class. So we can say class food is going to be printable. And for printable, we need a description so that it conforms to that protocol and we can just return food class for right now but we'll fix that in a little bit. For the food we need to create three functions. We need one that's going to get the names of the foods for the sprites and we need one that's going to get the food types and then we need one that's going to get the sprite names because we have a very interesting situation here. If you look at the hot dog when they click on the buns we needed to return both bun 1 and bun 2 so that it puts both buns on the screen. So let's just create the uh, get food types and get foods. Uh, this is going to be a class function, so we don't have to instantiate the class. Get food types, and that's going to return a food type, and that's going to be an array of food types. And for the food types, we are going to return the bun, the hot dog, the ketchup, the lettuce, which is actually relish, but that's okay, and the mustard. So we're returning the actual enum for that. And now we want to return the string, which is going to get us the sprite. So we'll say get foods, and that's going to return an array of strings. So we'll return an array of bun, hot dog, ketchup. I really wish you could loop through enums. So far, I haven't been able to find a way to do it. If you know a way, please tell me. For the get sprite, now we can return the correct food. So it's going to be bun few or bun many or hot dog few or hot dog many. So we want to do food dot get foods and that's going to return this array and we want to grab the index of the array is going to be the raw value is it going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4 of this so that it'll return the string. So we'll just say two raw and that will return 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4 and then we need an underscore for the underscore of the buns few and then we need to know is it more or less so we say more or less then we can say get many and we'll just get the sprite where less is false and we can just make another one where we get few a getter here and we return get sprite where less is true so when less is true it'll return underscore few when less is false it'll return underscore many what we need here is to put our parentheses in the right space so we put the parentheses there so that we have the underscore in the middle which is the actual part of the string everything else is just variables okay so we have our food sprites available so now we can put our foods on the screen we'll need to come back to this in a second so let's go back to our game scene and in our game scene we have our add foods. So for add foods, we're going to do almost the same exact thing. So we're going to say for index and food in enumerate. Now remember that enumerate allows us to return the index and the object itself or the instance itself. And we're going to return, we're going to go through food dot get food type. So we're going to loop through all of the enum, the enums, create a sprite exactly how we did for the add people, which is going to be a new SK sprite node. The image name is going to be food.many because we'll start off with many buns or many lettuce or the sprite.name so that when we click on this we can identify it we'll call it an ingredient so we'll say ingredient underscore food dot get foods and this is going to return the list of strings not the list of enums and then we're going to get the food 
dot to raw, which is going to return the index of that food. So that will return the string value that we want. We want to set the anchor point of this sprite to be 0, 0 0.5 so that we can position it correctly on the screen. You notice that the food sits in those containers. So instead of trying to figure out where the middle of the container is, we can just put it on the far left side of the container. You see the container here. Instead of trying to figure out where the middle is, we can just position it on this far left side and then it'll sit perfectly in the container. That's why we're setting the anchor point. So we'll set the anchor point to be a CG point. We want to set 0 and 0 0.5. So the Y will still be the center. And then we want to position it in the food container. So this is the slightly tricky part, just because you have to kind of finagle it around to get it in the right place. So we're going to create a point. The point is going to be, I'm going to create a new line here. So for X, we're going to do CG rect get min X. So we're going to start from the far left side. And then we're just going to add on the sprite size dot width. So the width of that sprite. And we're just going to multiply it times the index, which needs to be a CG float. When we multiply it times the index, it'll go off to the right. Then for the Y position, the Y is going to stay the same the whole time. So we do a CG float and we do CG get min Y cg rect get min y which is going to get the bottom of the screen and we're obviously going to do that for self dot frame and to add on to that we want to get the sprite dot size dot height divided by two so that will put the sprite just a little bit higher and then we can add our sprite to the stage so self dot add child and the sprite is the sprite and then we need to append to our foods array which we didn't create yet so we'll go up here and we'll say var foods is equal to an array of foods and we'll make that a new array here we can say foods dot append and we're going to create a new food now we didn't create our initializer yet so let's go back to the food class so what we really need from that food is we just need to know what the sprite is and what type of food it is so we'll set the init to have a food type which is going to be of type food type and we'll set it to have a sprite, which is going to be an SK sprite node. We'll do self dot food type is equal to food type. And we need to create that property. So var food type is of type food type. Let's just create the other one so we get code completion here. We're going to also need the sprite. It's going to be of type SK sprite node. So then down here we can say self.sprite is equal to sprite. If you wanted to keep track of the food state, we can do that. We'll have to create a new enum up here for the food state. We're not going to use this, but I'll just show you how you would do it. Food state integer as the raw value. And then you're just going to do case many, case few, or case none. And it's easy to add, to show none because you just you make it invisible. So for this init method, then you would also pass in the food state which is going to be of type food state, which we could default to many because by default, it's going to start with a lot of food in there. So you might as well just default it to many. So we can say self dot food state. We got to create a food state here. Food state is equal to food state start to say these words too many times it starts to sound very strange okay so now we can go back to our game scene and we can append the food so we can say foods.append create a new food the food type is going to be the food the sprite is going to be the sprite and the food state is going to be food state dot many but we can leave that out because it's uh, going to default it has a default parameter so now we've added our food states to the screen let's see if that works so we have our foods on the screen perfectly aligned in the right spot. Okay, so they're a little bit to the right, but you can play around with those values. So you can see that this says 10 nodes at 30 frames a second. The 10 nodes are the background, this food panel, the three people here, and the five food items on the screen. Those are all SK sprite nodes. So those are all the 10 nodes. You got one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's your ten nodes on the screen. So the next thing we'll do is we'll add the hot dog over here, which changes to different states depending on what they click on. So you can see I have this hot dog here, and the hot dog has many layers. It has the two buns, and you can see if I take off the layers. So this is what we're going to do in the game is we're just going to keep adding layers to this. The important part is that there's two buns because the hot dog has to sit in between those two buns. So you can see that there's this bun and there's this bun. So sometimes your sprites may get a little bit complicated, so you have to kind of adjust properly. And I did draw this myself. I'm very proud of this hot dog. So <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to create a new class for this hot dog um, called hot dog. It doesn't really matter if it's before the food or after the food because it sits off to the right, but it matters that it's on top of the food tray area. We'll call add hot dog, and we can put that right here, function add hot dog. Okay, so for the hot dog, we just need to create a hot dog container, which is gonna contain all those sub sprite nodes, those sub SK sprite nodes. We'll create a hot dog container, hot dog container, which is gonna be sort of a blank SK sprite node. It's not gonna have any visual appearance itself, it's just gonna be this kind of empty container that you put different hot dog items into and then show and hide them at different times. And the order that we put them in is important. We'll create an original position so that we know when the, after they drag the hot dog, we need to know, you know where it needs to go back to. So we can say hot dog container original position and that's going to be equal to an, a CG point. One too many P's there. So we can say hot dog container dot position is equal to CG point make and we're going to put it on the farthest point to the X so all the way to the right so CG rect get max X CG rect get max X and we'll use self dot frame for that and for the Y we'll just do CG rect get min y. So it's gonna be on the bottom and then we'll just add some numbers to bring it up. So CG rect get min y, so that's the bottom. And we'll use self dot frame. And for the X position, because we don't want it to be all the way off the stage, we'll just subtract 40 from it. You can play around with these numbers to get it in the right spot. And we'll just add 30 to the min y so that it goes up a little bit and over to the left. And then we just need to store this original hot dog container, dog container original position is gonna be equal to hot dog container dot position. So now when we need to bring it back to its original position, we can do that. We'll say hot dog container dot name is gonna be equal to hot dog container. That way when they click on it, we'll know that they clicked on it. So we can move all of the sprites at once by moving the hot dog container. And then we can add it to the sage, self.addChild hot dog container. Now we need to create a new hot dog. We need to give it the container that it's going to place all of its assets into. So we'll say hot dog is equal to hot dog, a new hot dog. Now we haven't created that yet. And the self hot dog uh, property we need to create also. So we'll say var hot dog is going to be of type hot dog and we didn't create that yet that's why it's throwing an error so we'll create that we'll say uh, new file swift file hot dog dot swift and we need to just import sprite kit so what we'll do is we'll just create the init method because we need to create this hot dog we're going to need to do some more stuff in here obviously now we need the sprite which is going to be an sk sprite node we'll need to create a property for that now this should all sit within a hot dog class. So we'll say class hot dog, create our property var hot dog sprite. So we'll just call this sprite. It's gonna be an SK sprite node. And we'll say self dot sprite is equal to sprite. Okay, so now we have our hot dog and it's sprite. So now we can go back to the game scene and create our new hot dog and this is going to be a hot dog and the sprite for that is going to be the hot dog container so when we say sprite we're actually talking about the container that's going to hold all of those different sprites 
So now we can add all of the different hot dogs parts to the screen. So this time we're going to use the SK Texture Atlas. We're going to use the actual atlas itself. We were using the atlases before, but we didn't have to actually instantiate anything. What we'll do is we'll create a thing that says add hot dog. So we'll go back to our hot dog class, create a function called add hot dog. I guess I got to choose between my uppercase and lowercase d's. And we'll call it here. We'll say add hot dog. And we'll probably want to initialize the status of it, but let's do that after we create the hot dog. What we'll do is we will add all the different parts. So we'll create a function that properly initializes all the sprites that we need. What we need is we need a variable called food sprites. So this is going to be all the different parts of the hot dog. So that's going to be a food sprites. Add hot dog is going to add all the different parts. To do that, we'll do a function that's called init hot dog parts. And we need the food type, which is the type of the food, which you remember was bun, hot dog, and that's from the food.swift. We need the order that it should go in. So once they send in all these things, we want to make sure that we put the sprite in the right order. We will create that food part, um, which will be equal to a new SK sprite node. We're going to loop through some stuff here. We're going to grab the index and the name and what we're going to enumerate through, we're going to use that enumerate so we can get the index. We're going to do food dot get food sprite names. Now that isn't created yet. So let's go over to back to the food and create that. Go back to the food class. And in this food class, we need to be able to get the correct sprite. We're going to call class function here called get food sprite names. And the food name is going to be a string. And this function is going to return possibly more than one food name because, you know, we have a bun one and a bun two. So we need to return an array here just in case. Most likely it's just going to be an array of one item, but we need, might need to return more than one. So we want to say if the food name is equal to a bun, and if that's true, then what we want to return is bun one and bun two. So this is a special case where it's the buns because we need to return both buns. Otherwise, we're just going to return the actual food name in an array of its own items here. So we'll do food name. So we've just created an array with one item and that one item is the actual food name. So now we have that function. We can go back to our hotdog.swift. We can enumerate through the food.get food sprite names and the food name that we want to pass in is the food dot get foods and we want to grab the food type to raw so that's the food type that they passed in as a parameter of the function it's going to return an index so that we know which food to get and we're going to get that as a raw value so that will return us something like you know zero one or two and then from the get foods you can see that that's going to return bun, ketchup, whatever. And then from the get food sprite names, if it returns bun, we need to get bun one and bun two. So that's why we need to actually loop through stuff. So what we'll do is we'll just add to the food sprites array the order because we want to make sure that they go in the right order and the index. At that position, we're going to place the name. So basically what's happening here is mainly we're going to pass in one thing at a time. But in the case of the buns, we need to pass in two buns. And not just that, we need to place them at positions zero and three because the hot dog and the lettuce need to go in between the two buns because the lettuce kind of overflows over the side of the hot dog. So we need to place these hot dog buns on either side of all of the food. Because of that situation, we need to put the buns in there. And when someone says add the buns, we need to add both buns at the same time in the right position. So what we're doing here is the list of food sprites, we're putting them in in the right order. And the order that we pass in here is going to be an array of integers, most likely an array which only contains one item. For the hot dog, it's just going to be one. For the lettuce, it's just going to be an array which just contains the number two. But in the case of buns, it's going to be an array that contains a zero and a three, saying like put them at zero and three. Because get food sprite names is also going to return an array most likely with just one item. But in the case of the hot dog buns, it's got to return two items. And we're passing in the array 
at this index that we're looping through. So that's going to get us everything in the right position. So now when we do add hot dog, we just call init hot dog parts. The hot dog part we're going to do is food type dot bun and the order is going to be zero and three because we're passing in two buns. Then we're going to pass in the hot dog next and it's going to put this all in the right order. We're going to pass in the lettuce which is actually relish and that's going to go at position two. We're going to pass in the ketchup and that's going to go at position four. Then we're going to pass in the mustard and that's going to go in position five. So all this is doing is, is just populating this food sprites in the right order. Then we need to actually create those sprites and add them to the container that we have which contains all the food sprites. So we'll create a function called create food sprites. We'll get the food part which is going to be equal to an, a new SK sprite node which we're going to add onto the stage into this container. And all we're going to do is we're going to loop through each food name in the different food sprites. So now that they're in the correct order we can now loop through them. So we can say food part is equal to a new SK sprite node and we're going to use a texture here and the texture is going to come from the hot dog atlas here so we're just going to grab one of these textures and pass it in in order to do that we need to declare the hot dog atlas up here an atlas is just a folder which contains a bunch of images that allows us to grab any one of the images you can imagine that you'd have an array of different Mario positions for different sprites so that you can animate Mario or you know you'd have a bunch of background tiles so that you could make an entire scene out of like seven different tiles we are using it as different parts of a hot dog so we'll create a hot dog atlas as a constant and that's going to be a new SK texture atlas that's how you grab the atlas and we use the name which is going to allow us to grab over here we just pass in the word without the word atlas so we're going to pass in hot dog without the word atlas and that's going to grab all of these from here which is actually more efficient than placing things in the image asset library and it's quicker for us to actually make some things into an atlas as well instead of just placing everything into the image asset library now that we have our hot dog atlas we can grab the texture and that hot dog atlas texture is going to be equal to the hot dog atlas dot texture named and the name of the texture is going to be the food name that we're passing in here so we basically create an array and we're going to get bun 1 and bun 2 back if they passed in bun etc or just hot dog we're just going to give it a name so food part dot name and that's going to be equal to the uh, food name we're going to just say food part dot hidden is equal to true so we're gonna not show all of the different food parts and then we're just gonna add to this sprite container this actual food part so now we've got that food part added to the container and that container itself is added to the SK scene now we need to have a status of whether or not to show the food so we're gonna have this function called init status and we'll create that now and we're going to loop through all the different food types as if we're looping through the enum, but we can't. So we're using this food types thing. So for a food type in food type, but we can't do that. So we have to say food dot get food types. And then we can say status and we don't have a status yet. So let's create a status. This status is going to be a dictionary of different statuses. So maybe it should be called statuses which is going to be a dictionary and the key is going to be the food type and the value is going to be an integer and we'll just initialize that as an empty dictionary then we can say in statuses we're just going to initialize all the statuses to be zero so when it's zero we won't show it when it's one we will show it so we'll set the status of the food type to be equal to zero and then we'll set that food's visibility just so we know whether to show it or not and then we'll pass in that food type so we'll create another function called set food visibility and this is cool because then we can reuse this function when they actually click on it to set the food type visibility so we'll pass in a food type and that will be of type food type and you're seeing that we're passing around this enum a lot which is which is nice 
So we can say if the statuses and this food type within the status, if that hot dog in the dictionary is greater than zero, then we want to show the layer. But we only want to show the layer if the uh, quantity is greater than zero. So we didn't get into how many foods they added yet, but we will do that right now. This class represents the actual current hot dog that's being made. Each person is going to have their own personal order of what you've given them to see if it matches with what they wanted, but this represents the current hot dog that you're making. So within each food type, you're going to get zero through however many hot dogs you added. So if you add five buns, there's going to be five buns. But we just need to show the layer if the quantity is greater than zero. So the status is going to be how many of that food type there's going to be. Maybe it should be called quantity instead of statuses. So what we'll do is we'll loop through because we need to loop again because we may be dealing with more than one sprite at a time. If that's the case, then we need to loop. So we're going to say for name in food dot get food sprite names and the sprite name that we want is the food dot get foods which is going to return a list of strings and the current food type dot to raw so we're looping through all of the sprites for this current food that we're talking about here in the case of this then we're going to say self dot sprite dot child node with name and the name of that is just the name of the current food and we're going to say dot hidden is equal to false so we're going to show it because they've added more than one hot dog or they've added more than one bun or more than one relish so otherwise we're going to say for name in food dot get food with sprite name we're going to do the same thing the same exact loop dot get foods and we're going to loop through that array. We're going to grab the item at the array where the food type is the integer of the raw value. So then we're going to say self dot sprite dot child with node name name dot hidden is equal to true. So the quantity of this food has gone down to zero. If we were to run this, you wouldn't see anything because all the foods are going to be invisible. What we need to do is we need to make sure that when they click on a food in the tray that it adds that food and its quantity to the statuses of the actual hot dog and then shows it. So we'll go back to our game scene and we need to add a click listener, which is that touch began function, which is already there. And we can say four touches and this is gonna accept anything. We can create this location where they actually touch the screen is equal to touch dot location in node and the node is self so it's this sk scene that they clicked on so we're trying to find out the location in the sk scene then we're going to create a sprite we're going to get the sprite that is at the place that they touched so it could be any of the different sprites and we need to do different things based on what they touched so they could click on a person they could click on a hot dog. They could click on a, one of the ingredients. In that situation, we need to do different things. Node at point is going to be the location that we want to pass in. And we want to say if let sprite name equal to sprite dot name. So we're setting a value binding here equal to the name of the sprite. This should be touch dot node at point, not the other way around so that we get the node, the SK sprite node at that location. So then we're going to say if they clicked on an ingredient. So how do we do that? We say if sprite name dot has prefix and the prefix, remember we named all of those with ingredient underscore. So if it has the prefix of that, then we will split the string by those underscores. So we're doing a little string manipulation. So we're going to split the string by underscores. In order to do that, we have to say var uh, split string by underscore is equal to sprite dot name dot component separated by string and the separator that we're looking for is the underscore so now we're splitting the string by underscore and that's going to give us an array back so we want to get the second half of the array everything after the underscore so we're going to say var food name is equal to split string by underscore 
and that's an array which is going to contain two items ingredient and the food name so the food name is going to be the one and then we can add a food layer to the hot dog so we can say self dot hot dog dot add food layer now we didn't create this yet so let's go ahead and create the add food layer to the hot dog so we can add that food layer to the hot dog so we'll call function back in the hot dog dot swift add food layer and that's going to be a food type which is going to be of type food type we know what they clicked on one of the only options for the hot dog part so we can say var um, the quantity of what they clicked on is a statuses food type so we're going to look in the dictionary of statuses for the um, food type now because this is getting an item out of the dictionary we need to um, force that value saying that we know that there's going to be definitely something there so then we say statuses dot food type is going to be equal to the quantity plus one so we're getting the current quantity of that food type like the hot dogs or the buns and then we're adding one to it so we're just increasing that and then what we're going to call is set food visibility for food type and we're going to set that visibility for that food type and that's going to either hide it or show it depending on what they did we can go back to our game scene and we can implement this so now we're back in our game scene and we have this add food layer and it wants to know the food type that we passed in now we have it as a string and we need to get the actual food type back from the, the we want to get the enum value we want to get the enum itself not the string so we can do that by calling food that get food types which is going to be that array of food types and we're going to pass in the array we want to get the item at an index what we're going to do is we're going to search through the array of foods which is um, food dot get foods we're going to look through that and we're going to get the item at the food name so we're going to use find which is if you've used JavaScript before that's sort of like index of and what we're searching for is something with the food name that we found which was the second half of the string because find returns an optional we're going to force it because we know that we have these specific things in there we know that that's definitely going to be in there so that's going to return an optional so by calling add food layer it's going to add one to the quantity and then it's going to hide or show the item so we left the hiding and the showing completely up to the food class itself if it's not an ingredient then we want to check if the sprite that they clicked on the parent is the hot dog container and those are the only two things we can click on right now so we're just going to have an else statement we can say if the sprite dot parent dot name so they may have clicked on one of the hot dog items which is the hot dog itself they want to go drag it to give it to a person if they click and the parent of that sprite is equal to the uh, hot dog container then we're going to begin dragging that item so we're going to say hot dog dragging is equal to true now we didn't create that yet so let's create that up here We'll just say var hot dog dragging is equal to false because it's not dragging right now. So that's what's going to happen on the touches began. We know that we're only having one touch happen, so we don't need to loop through all the touches. It's only going to pass in one touch because we told it to do one touch at a time. But in case there was multiple touches, you could just press, you could type return there and it's not going to loop through the rest of the touches. Now we should be able to run this and click on one of the items. We have an error. Let's see what the error is. Needed to be initialized. So if we turn this hot dog into an optional, then we need to go down to where we called self.hotdog and force it. And then that will get the add food layer. So in this case, the way I got rid of the error was by doing a clean. That's command shift K. Once I did that, the error went away. So sometimes you just have to do a clean. If it doesn't seem to make sense, just try doing a clean. Now we have an error here, array index out of range. So the issue here is that we have this food sprites, which is initially an empty array. And we're trying to get something at an index, which doesn't exist yet. But what we're trying to do is kind of populate this array 
but we're trying to populate it in the right order. So what we need to do is we need to create an array that's empty, but has the right amount of stuff in it already. So we're going to say food sprites here in the initialize method is equal to a new string array or an array of strings. And we're going to use this count method, which is going to allow us to um, put in a certain number of items. So we can say hot dog atlas dot texture names dot count. So the number of items we want to put in is the count of the number of textures in the hot dog atlas. And the repeated value, we're going to just put in a bunch of blank strings. And by doing that, we'll have an array of blank strings that can then be replaced with the different food parts. If we run this, we have another error. So what we need to do in order to get this working is we actually need to create the sprites. So right under add hot dog, add in create food sprites. We wrote the function. We just didn't call it. And now we're going to run it. We may get more errors. We wrote a lot of code. Oh, so we got our food sprites on here. Now we're going to click one. OK, so we're getting an error. And let's see what the error says. Unrecognized selector sent to instance. So after a little bit of searching here, I found out that I had written here touch.node at point. And it shouldn't be touch.node at point, because what we're trying to get is the node, the sprite, at the point where they touch. So it should be self dot node at point. So self is going to be the SK scene, and we want to get the node at the point in the SK scene. Node at point on the touch, which is an NS set, that's a completely different thing altogether. So it's no wonder that we were getting a huge error. So as soon as you change this, if you were following along and you put this as touch dot node at point, and you were like, what the heck is he doing? Now you'll know. So if you run this with that new stuff, you can click on the hot dog, and it puts two buns there. And you can click on the hot dog, and it puts the hot dog in between the two buns, which is really cool. You got your ketchup, which you can hardly see. You got your relish or lettuce. And then you have your mustard. So it builds those layers individually. And what's cool is that if you click the hot dog first, you'll see the hot dogs there. And then you can click the buns, and it'll put it around the outside because it's reordering the order of the sprites. It's putting them in a specific order. So that definitely works. You could put that, and then that, and then that. So we have this kind of multi-layered hot dog, which we can't drag yet. So now what we want to do is we want to make these people have anger levels and an order. So let's work on their anger levels. The way the anger level works is there's a timer. It updates every once in a while. And when it updates, you get a new anger level. Now, each girl is going to have their own separate random anger level that will update randomly, but we're only going to use one timer. What we're going to do is we're going to create the anger levels for the people. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our person class. So that's in person.swift. And in there, we're going to create an anger level. We're going to say self.time to anger is going to be equal to some random ns time interval. And we're going to do one plus arc for random uniform. So instead of creating a whole function, we can create the random number here. So it's going to be anywhere from 1 to 4 is going to be their time to anger. So we need to create that up here. It's going to be equal to a new ns time interval. And what we'll do is we will initialize the anger frames. We have to set up the whole anger atlas. So we're going to set up a couple of variables here. One is going to be the anger atlas itself which is going to reference this anger atlas over here for the anger bars. That's going to be equal to an SK texture atlas, and that's going to be named anger. Then we're going to keep a reference to the frames, to all the frames in that so we can animate it. So we'll say anger atlas frames is equal to XK texture, and this is going to be an array of XK textures. So we're going to take all the frames out of that. We're going to store all of it in one anger sprite. So we're going to create an anger sprite that's going to be equal to a new SK sprite node. So we're going to need an anger level, which is going to be currently equal to zero. So they're going to start at zero. So we're going to keep in a variable the last time they got angry so that we know when to make them angry again. And we'll store that as a double for right now. OK, so we got a couple of things to do here. First, we're going to set up our anger frames. So we'll call set anger frames. We'll create that function called set anger frames. We will loop through all of the textures. We will add to our anger atlas frames each texture. We'll say for i 
in zero to self dot anger atlas dot texture names dot count. So this is how you can count how many textures are in an atlas. Anger atlas frames, this is an array, so we can append a new texture. So we can do anger atlas dot texture named. And the name of the texture is going to be the texture at i. So we're going to do anger underscore i. And the reason we're doing that is because if you look in the anger atlas, they're all underscore 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So you can see that if you needed to animate something, you can easily give something an underscore and a number, and you can loop through it using this index. So that, that's pretty easy. And then once we have our anger atlas frames, we have an array of all the frames, we can initialize our sprite with a function called init anger frames. And what we'll do is we will reset the texture to be self dot anger sprite is going to be equal to a new sk sprite node. The texture that we're going to use currently is the anger atlas frames, the array we just made. We're going to use the, the first frame, so the zeroth one, so they'll have an empty anger level. And we'll also initialize that down here, so init anger frames. So now we'll have an empty array of anger frames. And we also want to set the anger frame position. So the self dot anger sprite dot position dot x is going to be relative to this person. They're going to sit at the same position as this person the whole time. We'll just move it a little over to the right. And then self dot sprite dot add child. And we're going to add the anger sprite to the screen. So now we should be able to run this. And you can see that each of our people here have their own anger level. But we're not increasing it yet. We need to uh, deal with their anger level. So we did set this person a random time to anger. So that's good. What we need to do is we need to start incrementing that anger level. Now we want to use one timer for all three people instead of creating an individual timer. And we can check that timer on the main game scene. So if we go back to our game scene, we'll create a timer. So at the top here, we can create var timer is equal to an ns timer. What we need to do now, using the timer in, in Swift was a little bit tricky. It took a little bit of research to figure out the proper way to get it working. So we got ns timer, there we go. So in the view did move, after we add the food, we just kind of start the timer. And that's not a function that exists, we need to write that. We're gonna write start timer. So this is gonna increase their anger level we start the timer by saying self dot timer is equal to a new ns timer dot schedule timer with time interval and the time interval we want to use you got to make sure you do the right one we want the one with the user info we want this one and what we're going to set for the timer interval we're going to do it every half a second 0 0.5 the target is going to be self, meaning the SK scene. The selector is basically going to say, what function do you want to run every time that this timer gets executed? So we're going to create a function here called update timer. And the way that we reference this function, or one way that we can reference this, there's many ways to reference selectors in Swift, but the way that I used is by calling selector, and then in parentheses, you add the string that is the update timer function or method. The user info is going to be nil and repeats is of course going to be true because we want this to repeat. Now in the update timer what we're going to do is we're going to loop through all the people and see if we can update their situation. So we want to say for person in people. Now what we want to say is if the person is not currently leaving the screen, which we haven't done yet. So we can say if not person dot leaving. Now we want to add that into the people because they may be currently leaving. If they've already started leaving, then we don't want to update their anger. So we go back to the person class and we just add a variable called leaving. That's going to be equal to false because they're currently not leaving. We go back here and now we can say is the person leaving. We haven't set that yet, but it should work. Then we could say if the person dot set anger and we need to create this function. And this function is going to return some information about their anger level. Let's go back to the person and create a function called set anger. So we go back to this person. We're going to create a function called set anger and the amount of time 
that we want to weight should be in an integer and this is going to return a boolean and what we're going to say is if they are leaving or if they're coming in then we're going to return false so we weren't able to set the anger if they were leaving or they were coming in so we're going to set another variable up here called coming in is equal to false because they are neither coming nor going. And then what we can say is if the wait time is equal to the time to anger, we can say if their anger level is less than six, because there are six animations. Now we could make this the number of texture nodes in the anger atlas and stuff, but six is fine for now. If their anger level is less than six, then the anger level is going to increase by one. We are going to say self dot anger sprite, which is the sprite that holds the current anger situation. Dot texture is going to be equal to a new XK texture. So we're going to change the current anger level image and we're going to set it as the image named anger underscore. And then we're going to set it as the anger level. That way, if their le anger level is two, it will go to the anger atlas. It will grab anger level image two, and it'll put that up on the screen. So now we're setting the anger sprite. What we need to do is we need to reset the last time that they got angry. So we can say reset last anger, and that doesn't exist yet. So let's just write that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create a function called reset last anger. And the reason we're making this a function is we may need to call it in other places. So we can say self dot last anger, which is this is the the last time that they got angry, is going to be equal to an ns date object dot time interval since reference date. In the Unix timestamp, that works by giving you the date since 1970. Um, this one works by giving you the interval since 2001, January 1st. That's just the way that Apple works. So we're going to use this time interval. Usually you use a, a Unix timestamp for stuff, but it doesn't really matter. All you're doing is you're setting the current time interval saying, we just got angry right now. So then when the timer starts clicking again, it's going to say, well, how long has it been since they last got angry? Is it time for an update? And we have a random amount of time that we set that takes them to get angry. And so we subtract the current time interval since the reference date, meaning the number of seconds since January 1st, 2001. We subtract that from the last time they got angry and we'll see how long it took them to get angry. But basically we're resetting the last anger by setting the last anger to uh, the current time, essentially. So we reset the last anger and we reset the last anger and we return false because this didn't wind up with an angry customer that left. They're still angry. They're still going to continue to do business with you. So that's what the, the Boolean returns. So we're going to do else. Their anger level is now equal to six. So we're going to say that they are leaving. They're currently leaving. We're going to make them leave. Now that they did leave, we're going to return true because this was an anger situation that resulted in them leaving. So the amount of time for them to get angry has to be equal to the time that was passed into this, which means that it was now time to increase their anger. If it was, then we will increase their anger. If their anger is so high that they now need to leave, they will now walk off stage. So we need to create a function called leave that's gonna make them you know, walk off the stage and we need to make them come back as well. We're gonna make an action here and this is gonna be equal to um, a new SK action. An SK action is something that you can use to uh, animate with. It's something that you can use to do something. And then you have to run the SK action. Ours is going to be move to X. And the X that we're going to move to has to be a CG float and that's going to be a thousand. So we're just going to throw them off the other side of the stage to the right. I don't know where a thousand is but I know that it's far. It's going to take them two seconds to walk off the stage which means that if they walk from a farther distance, they're gonna walk faster. If they're near the edge of the stage, then they're gonna walk slower because it's gonna take them less time to get to a thousand. We're gonna say leave action dot timing mode is equal to SK action timing mode 
dot ease in and what this is going to do it's going to allow them to not just walk off the stage in a linear fashion it's going to allow them to walk slow and then get faster it's going to allow them to ease in and then what we can do is we can say self dot sprite dot run action and then we're going to run the leave action which is going to allow them to run off the stage once they are done that leave action we can create a closure at the end that says self now we didn't create off yet we want to see if they're completely off the stage var off. This is different than leaving or coming in. Off is like they are off the stage completely. So we can't say off because we're in the middle of a closure. So we have to say self dot off. Sometimes you just have to clean. So you can say self dot off is equal to false and that's expecting a return value. That's why we're getting an error there. Self dot off is equal to true because they are off the stage. Self dot reset anger l l reset anger frames which we didn't create yet. Let's create that function reset anger frames so to reset the anger frames we're just going to say anger sprite dot texture is equal to sk texture image named and we're going to just set it to anger underscore zero so we're going to set it back to anger zero so we're going to reset the anger frames from this function if it got all the way through then we need to just return false so we have this update timer, which we never got to complete because we were writing some stuff. So we'll go back to our update timer. So the person is not leaving, and now we're gonna set their anger based on the current time. So we're gonna get an integer, which is the nsdate.time interval since reference date, which is gonna get us that time since 2001. And we're gonna subtract the person dot last anger and that's going to give us the difference in how long they've been waiting since their anger went up the last time if the level of unsatisfaction is greater than four and we use this plus plus beforehand so that we increment it and we can check it at the same time we're going to create a level of unsatisfaction here var unsatisfied is equal to zero. If too many unsatisfied customers, unsatisfied. So if that level of unsatisfaction is greater than four because you've incremented it and then checked, you're gonna do a print line and I'll leave it up to you to do whatever you want. I'll just write, you lose. Then you could save their score, their money, all that stuff. What's gonna happen is if the person is not leaving, if the person is not leaving, we also need to check if the person is completely off and that person is not coming in. So if the person is off the stage and they're not currently coming in, then we need to bring them back in the, on the stage. So we're gonna write person.come in. So basically what happens is the person's gonna walk off the stage. As soon as they get off the stage, that flag is gonna get set that the person's completely off the stage. This timer's gonna get run every half second. It's gonna check if the person's completely off the stage and they're not currently walking back in, well then we need to make them come back on the stage. So they're gonna turn around again and come back on. So we'll write this person.come in. So we need to go back to our person class and write the come in function which is similar to the leave function. So we go back to our person class and we write function come in. And the function come in is gonna say that leaving, they're currently not leaving, so we have to set that to false because they were leaving before. Now we're gonna set that to false. We're gonna say that they are coming in. So now coming in is true. And we're gonna create a uh, coming in action. And that's gonna be equal to an SK action uh, dot move to x and the x is going to be the original position dot x now we haven't created the original position yet so let's go and uh, create that so we need to create an original position up here var original let's do original position and that's going to be that's going to be a, a cg point and then down in the init method, once we added the sprite, we can say uh, self dot original position is equal to sprite dot position. For the coming in, we're gonna put that. We're gonna tell them to go back to their original position, and the duration it's gonna take them. It's gonna take them two seconds to walk back in. We're gonna set that ease effect by using the uh, timing mode coming 
in action dot timing mode is equal to sk action timing mode dot ease out because we want them to ease out when they actually arrive we want them to slow down because they were running so fast and then we're going to run the action by saying sprite dot run action and the action is going to be that coming action coming in action we're going to run that we're going to use the trailing closure to do something afterwards so once they finally made it onto the stage it's been two seconds since they started running in they're in their original position we'll say off is equal to false because they're no longer off the stage we'll say oh we have to say self dot off because we're in a closure and we have to say self dot reset last anger because they've come back in uh, they're no longer angry we're going to also set the anger level again so we're going to reset that anger level equal to be zero we're going to set the anger frames so we're going to do reset anger frames good thing we made these functions so we can call them again and we're going to say self dot coming in is equal to false because they're done coming in they're now in and off is false in theory this should work they should get angry to a point and if they get too angry they should walk off we'll see if we have any bugs nobody's getting any angrier so let's find out why so the problem is, is that we didn't set the last time they ang got angry initially so what we have to do is uh, reset last anger which we already created so we just need to initially call reset last anger so let's run this so we can see this girl gets angry faster than these two people and she gets angry the slowest now she's got completely angry and she walks off and then she came back on so this works and she's resetted her anger level and this girl got completely angry she walked off now she's come back on and she's reset her anger and those two so you can see that by creating these individual instances of people you have individual things going on completely on their own so they each have their own timer really the whole game only has one timer on its own so it's pretty cool the way that that works okay I just got to see this one get angry. Do it. There she goes. Okay. So we have them getting angry. We have them leaving. Now what we need to do is we need to give them an order that they need fulfilled. So the first thing we'll do is we'll create a tooltip on top of them that, that will show uh, what their current order is. So up here we will create a tooltip. So we'll say let tooltip equal to sk sprite node image name tooltip and let's just go into the image assets make sure we have that we do we have tooltip so there we have their tooltip now what we need to do is the tooltips are multi-line you can't have a multi-line text you have to create individual instances of the sk label node and put them underneath each other if you want multiple lines so we're going to create a variable called tool tips which is going to be all their orders and that's going to be a string array so then what we need to do is we just need to add that tooltip to this person and we need to set the anchor point so that it's easy to position the text and the tooltip and all that stuff so down here what we can do is we can create a self dot tooltip dot anchor point and we're going to set that equal to a new cg point and that's going to be equal to 0 0.5 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 which is the middle sometimes it's good to just set it and then we're going to set the the position of that tooltip so we'll say self dot tooltip dot position dot y is going to be equal to cg rect get max uh, y and the max y is going to be self dot sprite dot frame so this current person's max y so we're positioning it in reference to the sprite that this tooltip is contained within and we're going to add to that the uh, self dot tooltip dot size dot height divided by two and then we're just going to say self dot sprite dot add child and we're going to add the self dot tooltip on there so now we should have that tooltip and you can see we do have the tooltip and that tooltip should move around with the girl so it does and now what we need to do is we need to create five labels within this tooltip so what we'll do is we'll say for i in one two five inclusive and we'll create a new tooltip label and that's going to be equal to an sk label node 
the font we're going to make Courier tooltip label dot name because it's just like a sprite so we can give it a name we can call it tooltip if i is equal to one meaning it's the first tooltip we can say tooltip dot label the tooltips labels position dot y is going to be equal to tooltip label dot position dot y plus twenty so twenty from the top so we just want to position that first tooltip and then we can position all the other ones so we can say var other tooltip is going to be equal to self dot tooltip dot child node with name and it's going to be tooltip i minus one because we are looping through and we started on one as an sk label node so we're grabbing the other tooltip and what we're going to do is we're going to say tooltip label dot position dot y is equal to the uh, other tooltip dot position dot y minus 10 and then what we're going to do is we're going to say tooltip label dot font size is equal to 9 tooltip label dot font color is equal to uh, ui color dot black color we'll append this to the list of tooltips so we'll say self dot tooltips dot append and we'll do tool tip label dot name so that we can reference them by name we don't have to append the tooltip itself we can say self dot tooltip dot add child and we're going to add the actual label node to it okay so now we have these five labels they're all blank we're going to set the text for the tooltip so we'll call set text for tool tip and we have to create that function so let's do that function set text for tool tip and now we need to go through all the tooltips for tooltip in tooltips and we need to say var this tool tip is going to be equal to self dot tool tip dot child with node name and that's going to be this tooltip that we're looping through as an sk label node and we'll set the tooltip dot text equal to blank and then what we'll do is we'll say for index an item in enumerate self dot current order which we don't have yet dot items before we do this let's create that order that this person should have so if we go to the top here we can create a var current order and that's going to be equal to a type order which is equal to a new order which we haven't created yet so let's create that now so we need to create a new file that will house the order that the person wants new file new swift file and we'll call it order dot swift so this is what they want in a hot dog. We'll import sprite kit and we'll say class order is of type printable. And in order to be printable, we have to say var description is a string and we will return order. And we can update that later. And we'll say the items in the order is gonna be equal to a new order item uh, array. We haven't created the order items yet so let's create that down here. We can actually write two classes in here. Order item is also of type printable. Var description is a string which returns an order item. And we'll say the, uh, the food type of this one item in the entire order is gonna be of type food type. Because we're writing all these classes, we're able to reuse all of our classes. The quantity, the amount that they want is an integer and we'll create an init. We'll say that the uh, food type needs to be initialized, which needs to be a food type. We'll say the quantity needs to be initialized, which is an integer. Self.food type is equal to food type. And self.quantity is equal to quantity. So now we have this order item. Now what we'll do is we'll create a function called create order. And this will basically create a random order. The items in the order is gonna be an empty array and that's the items from up here. We're going to just dump that array. And we got to get a random number of items. So the number of foods is going to be an unsigned integer 32, which is a food.getfoods.count. So how many foods are available? And this way you can easily add another food 
to the atlas and it would automatically add another food. Now you'd have to update the graphics and stuff, but that's okay. Var number of items is going to be equal to int one plus arc for random uniform number of foods minus one var hot dog so now you need to make sure that when they create the food you want them to have the same amount of hot dogs and buns because it doesn't make sense to have three hot dogs and two buns hot dog and bun count is going to be equal to an integer one plus arc four random uniform an int 32 um, so one to five needs to be an unint 32 uint32 and then we're going to say variable i is equal to zero for i in zero to the number of items inclusive if food dot get food types that food is equal to food type dot hot dog or food dot get food types i is equal to food type dot bun then items dot append we're going to append a new order item and we're going to create a food type which is going to be the food dot get food types i and the quantity is going to be hot dog and bun count because we want the number of hot dogs and buns to be the same so that'll make the hot dogs and buns the same otherwise we'll just say items dot append a new order item the food item will be food dot uh, food dot get food types I the quantity will be um, some int uh, one plus arc for random uniform unsigned integer 32 it's a lot of uh, closing parentheses there so now we have our way to create an order for a person so that order is going to be made up of a bunch of order items and each order item is going to contain a number of um, the food itself, what type of food it is, and the quantity. So now we can go back to where we were. So go back to the person.swift. Looks like we have an error here. This should be this tooltip, not tooltip. So it's referencing the tooltip itself, not tooltip the string in the array of strings. So now we can loop through the current order. What we want to do is we want to create just an initial current order for this person. So we'll say somewhere around here, maybe after time to anger, we'll do current order dot create order. Now we've created an order. So we're gonna loop through all these and we're say, um, for all the items in this order, we're gonna set the text for the tooltip because we now have a current order. So we'll say var dot current tooltip label is equal to self dot tooltip dot child with node name to get the correct sprite, the SK label node, which is going to be self.tooltips index. So get the string of the tooltip at this index and then get the label for that as an SK label node. Because we're positive it's going to be an SK label node. Then we'll say current tooltip label, which is that that was just grabbing that tooltip. We'll say the text is equal to um, self.current order dot items so for this item at this index in this loop dot quantity because we have an order item class and then we will say that so that's the quantity so it's like one hot dog two hot dogs whatever now we're, um, we're not doing plural uh, fixing and stuff like that so it's just going to always have an s on the end if you want to do that you can self dot current order dot items index dot food type and we'll just add an s on the end of the whole thing so now we have the text for the tooltip so now let's see what happens when we run this so i just figured out that really nasty bug it looks like it's a compiler error because this is in beta um, it didn't like that i was writing this i minus one in the else statement so when i took that up to here it seems to work but if i put it in the else statement it gives me a very nondescript error so you're going to put last tooltip label so you're going to have the last tooltip label which is going to grab the child node that's at the name tooltip i minus one you're grabbing the previous tooltip the tooltip that was on the last round now this is going to be an optional because 
the first time around it's not going to be able to find a tooltip. The second time around it will, and that's why we force this because we know if i is not going to be 1, then i is going to be greater than 1. So we know that there is a tooltip. And then we give this tooltip a name, which is i set the font size, set the color, append it to our list of tooltips, we are good. Now up here in our set text for tooltip, when we run this, we'll see that we have four foods, five foods, whatever. So everybody has an order, but the words are not correct yet. So now we can use our food type dot description. If we go to that right now, it just says food, but we can return food dot get foods and we'll get the index of two raw. So that will return the actual string of that food. So now that we have the description, we can run this. So now we see this person has five buns, five hot dogs, and the buns and the hot dogs match. And if we click this, we get both buns. So everything looks good. We can go back to our game scene and we can deal with dragging the hot dog. So game scene, we have touch began. What we need is touches moved. On the touch move, we want to grab the uh, touch, which is of type any object. And that's going to be equal to touches any object. So we'll grab the touch. And then we'll get the uh, position on the scene, otherwise known as the location. Location in node. And that's going to be equal to the location on the screen. So we put self in there. And then we're going to do the previous position because we need to know where to move it from. This is how you do a drag. And you're going to do touch.previous location in node self. And then you're going to do a translation. And that just means how are you moving it? And what you're going to do to do that is you're going to make a point. Points X is going to be the position on the screen, on the scene, X, minus the previous position, dot X. And the Y is going to be the position on the screen, the scene, dot Y, minus the previous position, dot Y. So you tr subtract where it went to. So you get this, what's called a translation. Not translation in terms of language, but translation in terms of uh, movement. So then you can do var position is equal to the hot dog container dot position. That's the current position. We will say that the hot dog container dot position is equal to a CG point make and we're going to move it by saying position dot x move it to this point where the position dot x is equal to this plus the translation dot x and you're going to go to the position dot y plus the translation dot y. So now that's going to drag it. So that's going to move the entire hot dog container. At that point, it will move the hot dog container. So before we test this out, let's do the touches ended. Um, this is what happens when the user stops touching the screen, then when they lift up their screen. It's kind of like a mouse up event. So we can say hot dog dragging is equal to false. It's no longer dragging. We can grab the uh, current touch, which is equal to any object. And we know that's going to be any object, so touches dot any object. And then we can get the position in the screen and the scene. That's going to be equal to touch dot location in node self. Test if it's good to order. If the order matches the person that you dropped the hot dog on and we're going to set that to be true and then we want some function to say that it's not good otherwise it is true so then we're going to get is it an order var person is going to be a type person we want to grab the uh, person that it landed on but that needs to be an optional because it may not land on a person so for the thing which is of type any object in uh, self.nodes at point which is um, based on the position in the scene. We're going to do an, a binding here, a value binding. We're going to grab the sprite, which is that thing, as an SK sprite node. So hoping that we're going to be able to type this as an SK sprite node. 
And if we are able to do that, then we'll say if the sprite has a name, which hopefully it has a name, and then we can say if that sprite dot name dot has a prefix of a person because we gave the people name of the sprite uh, a name with a person underscore and then the name of the person. So if that's true, then the person that we want to grab is going to be equal to get get person for sprite. And we're going to pass in the sprite. Now we didn't write this yet, so let's quickly write this function get person for sprite. And this is a simple function, but it's just better to write it in a function instead of writing it directly in the code. It's going to be equal to an SK sprite node. We want to return the person object. That's going to return a person optional because it may not be a person that you landed on that sprite. So you're going to say for person in people, so we're going to loop through all the people that we have. If the person dot sprite is equal to person sprite, because we saved the sprite of the um, person in that object of the person. So if that's true, then we just return the person. Otherwise, we return nil because it's an optional and we can do that. So now we have our get person for sprite. So now what we want to do is we want to grab all the items in that person's current order. Now all of our classes that we wrote are really coming in handy because we can say for item in person dot current order dot items. Now we can force this because we know that the sprite has a prefix of person underscore. That's why we know that what we're grabbing is a person and we're not going to get an error. So we can say for items in person dot current items. So getting all of the items there. If um, hot dog, now this is that hot dog on the right hand side which has the kind of the current order in it. Dot statuses dot item dot food type. Look at all of our classes coming in handy here is equal to item dot quantity then is order is equal to true meaning that the order was successful otherwise good order is false and we can actually break here because we know that it's not going to work otherwise we continue looping now as we continue looping if one of the items that we loop through doesn't have the same quantity as the hot dog that we put on the right hand side then we will say good order is equal to false and we will immediately break and it will be time to you know exit stage left after the for loop we can say if it's a good order and the is order is true and we have a person if all of that is true you know the person wasn't nil then we can increase our score by two dollars and twenty five cents now you could make the score based on the number of items they have in the hot dog. I'll leave that to you to figure that out. But I'm just going to make it a score increase by 225. So we'll create a global variable up here called score and that's going to be equal to 0, 0.0. So here's our score and then we'll call set money and we'll call clear order for that person. So we don't have set money, we don't have clear order. Let's uh, create those really quick. Let's uh, hold off on set money. We'll do clear order first we'll just write a function here called clear order and we need the person that we want to clear the order for for and that's a type person now what we do to clear the order is we just say person current order dot create order and by calling create order it will erase their order and they will have a brand new order and we can say hot dog dot init status and that will erase the status of the hot dog so now we can go back to our touches end here we clear the order, set the hot dog container dot position equal to the original hot dog container original position. We move it back to where it was. And we say person dot leave. And the person will walk off the stage because they got their order. And then we say else. We say var move back action. So we need to move the hot dog back to where they dragged it from. And that's going to be an X SK action we're going to move it to a location. The location is the hot dog container original position. The duration is 0 0.2. We'll kind of swoosh it back. We can say move back action dot timing mode so we can have a little tween 
or a little easing action. We can say SK action timing mode dot ease in and we can say hot dog container dot run action and we will run the move back action. So now if we run this, what's gonna happen is we're gonna drag the hot dog, we're gonna move it over a person, it's gonna check that person's order to see if it matches the what contents are in the hot dog. If the hot dog's contents are no good, then it's gonna move the hot dog back to its original position. If the hot dog's contents are good, the hot dog is gonna disappear, it's gonna go with the person. The person's gonna leave, and then they're going to come back and you'll get two dollars and twenty five cents onto your score so let's see what happens when we run this so this person wants three buns and three hot dogs one two three one two three so we drag it to her see it drags and it was the right order and she left now I'm not sure if everybody left at the same time on purpose there one two one two let's see if I can get her oh so it just was a coincidence I guess um, so she wants three. So we have some bug there. So uh, we'll click the set money here. So set money, we'll just create that function down here. Function set money. And we'll say var. And we're going to create a formatter to format the currency. This is a good practice here. Get lots of stuff with this tutorial. This is unbelievable. So we're going to create a new number formatter. And we're going to say formatter dot number style is equal to uh, ns number formatter style dot currency style, and we need to create a scoreboard. So let's just quickly create a scoreboard here. So we'll go up to the top. We will create a scoreboard here. We'll say let scoreboard equal to sk label node where the font name is going to be uh, courier I should look that up how you pronounce that uh, we have a score of 0.0, .0 so now in the uh, did move view we need to position our scoreboard and kind of set it up so we'll do that last here we'll say scoreboard dot font color is going to be equal to UI color dot red color so there's a couple of colors you can grab out of that and scoreboard dot font size is going to be equal to 30 and scoreboard dot text is going to be equal to just to start off dollar sign zero dot zero zero scoreboard dot position is going to be equal to a new CG point make we're going to do cg rect get max x self dot frame and the y is going to be actually for this we'll just subtract 50 so it's not quite on the top of the screen and for this we'll do cg rect get max y and that'll be self dot frame and we'll just move it a little bit off the screen as well or more onto the screen to the left. And after all that, we just do add child scoreboard. This stuff we can kind of take out of the add child area and we can put it up here with the positioning stuff. Now for our money, going back to our set money, we can finally say scoreboard.text is equal to formatter.string from number score and so we will insert the score which is a money formatted number currency formatted number and we should be good to go so we can see our dollar sign up there so we'll do one two three four one two three four we'll drag it to this girl and we got our two dollars and twenty five cents and we just lost two customers we need one two three four one two three four so it looks like we're not resetting the hot dog. So it turns out what the issue was, we were resetting everything, but we weren't resetting the tooltip to show the new order. So when they leave, what we need to do after, they're le after they've left is we just have to call self.setText for tooltip in the person.swift. That way it'll erase the tooltip and it'll put their new order on. So now we can run this 
and we should be able to give the same person multiple items. So we got one, two, three, one, two, three, one. We give this to this person, she leaves, and now she's gonna come back with a completely different order. She wants one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. We can give that to her, and she leaves. Okay, so we got it. Uh, so that's what the bug was, and we're losing customers here. So that is the entire game. You can see that we now have $4.50 because we got two orders through. I wanna see what you guys create um, with this, take it another step further, create a trash can um, for the things and create more faces for these people so that when they get angry, they really look angry, change their anger levels. Um, you know, completely change this scene up, make it so that when you click and run out of um, hot dog buns that you go from some to few to none, you know. So there's lots of different options here. Uh, create more people. Make it get harder as time goes on. There's so many things you can do. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial. I'll see you next time.